Big news out of Worldwide Technology Raceway as Kenny Wallace Live is back. The pre-race show returns on June 4th following a resounding success in year one, drawing more than 5,000 fans early to the track. Here's just a portion of last year's show. I gotta tell a quick story. Uh oh, duh. Wait, 11, listen to this, Kerry. Tell me. 11 years ago, this racetrack came within two weeks of being sold for scrap metal. Yes. See those grandstands? Look yeah. over. They were getting ready to be torn down, and somebody, they're gonna sell it off for like a couple million dollars in scrap metal. This man that we are getting ready to introduce to you made a deal with all the farmers. He bought this facility. The reason we are here today yeah. is because of this man right here, the owner, Curtis Francois. Hey, Curtis. Oh, the man with the plan. And I got my buddy Gary right here. All right, guys. Hey, thanks, guys. It's wonderful. Great to be with y'all. Curtis, when you talk about what racing is all about, what NASCAR is all about, it's about people having a dream. It's about people rolling their sleeves up, pulling up their bootstraps, and going to work. What you have accomplished, you and your family, sacrifices, planning, hoping, and dreaming to make this day come true, I believe is second to none, folks. And this is one of the guys you have to thank for it. This is a fantastic day, man. Can you put into words what it means to you? You know, there's so many emotions. I mean, I think joy is the biggest one, you know, for the for the city, for all the fans here, for my family. Um, we've been waiting 25 years for a cup game, at least, if not more. And finally, 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 through perseverance, we got it done, guys. And I gotta tell you, every one of you are playing a role. The Wallace family's been playing, playing a role for so many years. Now and stop it. Go ahead, though. Go ahead, though. Uh, it's just, and Kenny in particular, I'll brag on Kenny. Kenny came over, I think, in 2012 when I bought this this place. And, uh, you know, we were talking about the racetrack and which direction it could go. And We met at uh, Joe Buck's restaurant. It's not there anymore. You and Chris Blair said, Herman, like Sterling Marlin say, meet us at the restaurant. We had a great conversation that day. Yeah, and I think I shared a little of the vision. You thought I was a little bit crazy. I knew you was crazy, <laughs> and I told you, you'll never get a cup date here. Yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. You, you, Curtis, you know what sets a man free? I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, you know, I heard, uh, I heard the great Richard Petty one time say, that's harder to find than hen's teeth. <laughs> What's harder to find than hen's teeth, guys, you got to realize, since 1969, they didn't change. They didn't make a major change to NASCAR's cup schedule. They went to the same places. And at one point, the schedule was locked in for five years. You weren't touching a cup date. And so in order to still go after one, and again, while we have to congratulate you guys, this, this is an impossible dream. This is something I'm sure how, how many people along the way probably said, you're never gonna do that. And, and here they did it, but that, that's the, again, a testimonial to stick into something, having a dream, and not giving up. Well, you know, and, and again, I, I say this with all sincerity, all y'all had a, a role in this. And part of, of the reason I think the France family decided to trust uh, us with their iconic, iconic brand was the St. Louis sports fan is second to none in the United States, period. Look at the crowd, look at the this is fantastic. Tri-City Speedway, Granite City, Illinois, right? Yeah, give it what? up. You know, I used to correct Rusty in his stories. I'd say, that wasn't it. He goes, shut up, Herman. It's my story. <laughs> so you won a record-setting features in a row against the best. Tell me about those those days. Do you want to forget about them, or were they, were they what got you to NASCAR? Well, you, you know, you were the whole part of it. You were there. Did, that, our early days of racing is what got us in NASCAR. Give us the drive, the motivation to uh, want to succeed. And it's very simple. Our father raced as fun for a hobby. We were just kids growing up. And I I'm going to tell you this story really quick, then I'm going to go back to it. 
We went to Fox High School in Arnold, Missouri. Okay, that's where we all graduated, or the three of us graduated from. And I remember one of the, the principals there looking at me one day and says, you know, you boys need to quit messing with them race cars because you'll never make anything of yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. I used, but, but, in Arnold, Missouri, the home of rednecks, it's where I live right now. When I was broke, I didn't ask nobody for money. What I would do is I would steal everybody's soda bottles off the back of their porch, tape them all over my bicycle, pedal up to the 7-Eleven and cash those son of bitches in. <laughs> then go to A&W and get me a hamburger. So, so going back to, you talk about getting to dirt, or dirt, getting yeah. to wherever. So we raced at Tri-City Speedway. You and Rust, uh, Rusty started. Then I, I was envious of you because you were down there at Bush racing. Do you know he sat on the pole at the Daytona International it Speedway ain't about me. for his first race? Very for right here. But, um, you know, you learn how to race there, and that gave you the opportunity. I went to Lebanon, Missouri, then Bolivar, Missouri in 1990. I won the NASCAR Winston Racing Series, a week touring series, and that's what gave me my opportunity to go NASCAR racing. And... Uh, I, I play third fiddle or third wheel, whatever. No, you Golden don't. Brothers. Stop that now. I bet growing hey, up in that hey, house was you, just... You folks will love this story. Let me tell it to you. It's my story. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. If you're rusty, you got to put your paw up like this. Yeah. Don't okay. let the facts get in the way of it. So, so this is a compliment to the Speedway here. We land on Tuesday at Lambert St. Louis Airport. My wife and I were walking through the airport. And there's this really cool WWT banner, Worldwide Technology Raceway banner below a blues banner and I stopped and took a picture of it. I said, Carla, I said, we don't see this very much anymore. They're actually promoting the race, you know? And so we make the corner, it, this, another minute, we make the corner, here's two nice people, greeters, they're waving black, you know, black and white checkered flags and it says NASCAR and here, to get to talking to the people and lady says, are you in, do you know anything about NASCAR? I says, a little bit. <laughs> and, and uh, she goes on down and she, I says, have you ever heard of the Wallace family? And she goes, Wallace family. I, I don't really know. I said, well, we're kind of a, I'm not egotistical, we're kind of a big deal, you know, around here. And uh, I says, you know, Rusty, Mike, Kenny. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know Rusty or Mike, but I know Kenny. I hear him on the radio all the time. <laughs> I'm, I'm so embarrassed. Stop. So, so that was my entrance back into town on Tuesday. Mike, thank you so much for joining us, brother. We appreciate you coming out here, man. Congratulations on all you've accomplished, and congratulations on being from St. Louis and getting a race here.